Comic Book Syndicate. We are here to review Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Look at it, it's the old gang. G.I. Jolie's here. Hi, G.I. Jolie. Hi. Hello, hello. <laughs> and Bex Luthor. Yo, what up? It's your boy. All right. Unfortunately, Josh could not be with us this week. Mm -hmm. But yeah, mm -hmm. we'll see him next time for sure. Um, yeah, so anyway, we're here to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Uh, we're not even going to summarize it because everyone who's watching this review knows what the plot is. Obviously, it's the third film of the trilogy. It's James Gunn's swan, swan song for Marvel before he goes over and saves DC Comics. Um, I'll just say that I'm a gigantic fan of the first film. It's probably my favorite Marvel Studios film. The second one was not quite as good, not as funny. And um, I do really like this third film. However, I think I that... It was coming. Yeah. I think I like it less than most people, and the main reason is because I felt so much of the humor fell flat. I did like all of the other stuff that everyone else likes, like the actual plot, the, you know, wrapping up all the characters, giving them their closure, the arcs, but I just felt that too much of the humor felt forced compared to the first one, and Avengers, uh, Infinity War, um, it wasn't as good as that even. So anyway, that's my first initial thought, but G.I. Jolie, what was your initial thought for this film? Um, I really enjoyed watching this movie. I was really scared about it going into it. And then I was like, for sure someone's going to die. And then, um, so so they're going to have to play that. They're going to have to play something for laughs. And I accidentally read something about um, it being like, so, so it's like, so pretty much this is just a Rocket Raccoon movie. And I was like, um, oh, yes, please. And then it was. And I was like, okay. I really, really like this. It really, it, it really wrapped up a storyline that I um, didn't know that I wanted resolution for. You know? I hear you. I hear you. Okay. I really enjoyed it. I like enjoyed all of it. I, um, I even enjoyed the stupid humor because it was just whatever. At this point, I'm used to Marvel pulling out not great humor. Like... It's like James Gunn style humor. It's like, okay, I'm going to have to deal with that in order to watch these films. Fine. Okay. Okay. Bex Luther, what's your first impression? Oh, I really, really like this. And it's like night and day Ant-Man going into this one. Oh, we were like, people were worried about Marvel for a second with that movie. And I think, I mean, James Gunn is leaving, so continue to worry. But this one was much more... <laughs> what we i think in like phase one and two called like some really good movies this is a really good this isn't even a good superhero movie it's just a really good movie and it does tie up a lot of things that i also didn't know needed to be tied up and it focuses on a character that you don't think is going to be able to carry an entire movie and then and then he does carry the whole movie in flashbacks even right because right. he's kind of in a coma for the entire movie even though it centers around him. Um, yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. I went to go see this movie with a with my partner and a bunch of, of their friends, and they're all kind of dude bros, and everybody cried. Everybody cried. And, yeah, uh, and I mean, I cry at every movie, so that doesn't mean anything, but, like, poof, this, this was a rough one. So um, that means you cried three times during this film. Oh, I cried, like, the whole whole way through from like the second act on <laughs> well the, i'm just in tears i cried in like the after credit scene i'm like bawling see the Star thing Lord is hugged his grandfather and i'm like please it's beautiful <laughs> i mean i'll definitely admit if i ever cried during a movie this was not one of them however i was sitting next to two younger women and they were bawling their eyes out like you didn't I cry no, I mean, I did really enjoy it, but I didn't cry, though. Maybe oh. maybe there was a, a one, like, a single choke. But um, the, the, gr the, the babies being tortured? You weren't the, sad? It was very sad, but it wasn't, it wasn't cry-worthy for me. But Lila. It was good. Lila. That was sad. That was, okay, maybe that part. Maybe that part. That was really the sad. Floor. The saddest marble death of all time. Floor. The saddest yeah. marble death of all time was an otter. That was sad. Okay, here's the thing. Yeah. I think this movie, when I watch it again, I will appreciate it a lot more. But I think it's because, the thing is, I'm a huge fan of Peacemaker. 
Like, it was my favorite show of last year. I'm a huge fan of The Suicide Squad. So I went in thinking this is going to be more humor like that, like Eagly and and uh, Vigilante and all that stuff. And so when it wasn't that, I think I was just waiting for it. And then about 45 minutes in, I was like, it's not going to be that. And obviously, I enjoyed it for what it was, but I just wished it was more like what I wanted it to be, you know? Now, that being said, obviously, I'm in the minority because everything about the film that, that I didn't go in for is what's making it so popular like all like the animal the the stuff with the cruelty to animals um like the development of the high evolutionary is a really interesting character right like rocket raccoon getting the spotlight um you know the mm -hmm. again like even like the like the whole thing about uh what's half in the bag point of this out the one part of the movie when they're in the elevator and star lore is explaining to someone else who gamora is and he's like, yeah, well, you know, she died and then she came back to life. And then, you know, oh, she got thrown off a cliff and killed and then she came back to life. Why did she get back to life? No one else did. I don't know. What was it? Magic cliff? I don't know. Was it the, 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 the soul stone? Blah, blah, blah. And it's almost like he was making fun of Marvel Studios because as far as this reviewer was saying, he was James Gunn was forced to, to use that plot twist. He didn't want to have Gamora killed off, right? So it was kind mm -hmm. of uh, his way of criticizing the way that the writing went in uh, Infinity War and uh, Endgame. But anyway, it was nice that they didn't just magically end up back together, right? Like Gamora is back, but she's a different person, right? So it was cool to see not everything just completely wrapped up in a perfect bow. Mm -hmm. And say, that's, that's the Guardians of the Galaxy MO since the beginning. Nothing has been in a perfect bow and nothing is status quo about the way that these films um, exist. When Guardians of the Galaxy first dropped, the soundtrack blew everybody away because it, it shattered the mold for what... a uh, superhero movie soundtrack was. And now every superhero movie soundtrack for some reason is doing contemporary soundtrack and a score but mostly a contemporary soundtrack well when you say contemporary though it's retro right like like the first suicide you know squad. what i mean yeah uh, i just had to clarify yeah sorry there's a reason I'm, for that I'm a, I'm a child of the 80s so all of this the, 90s music is stuff that sure. i like listen to <laughs> well, but this, the reason I pointed out is because it was 70s, 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 80s. Then all of a sudden, everyone did 70s, including the first Suicide Squad, including Doctor Strange. But now this movie, James Gunn flips it. He's like, no, I'm going to do 90s. I'm going to do 2000s. Right? So he even subverted your expectations there. But anyway, go ahead. Mm -hmm. It's like, you want Beastie Boys? You've got the Beastie Boys. And Faith No More. I was so happy to oh, see Faith No More. I heard that song and I thought about you, Mike. I know we weren't in the same theater, yeah. but... But I was like, Mike is gonna lose his shit. <laughs> yeah, and I did. Yeah, I was um, I was letting you have that one because you deserve thank you. it. <laughs> thank you. Um so okay, let's um there had to be let's okay, there had to be something that you didn't like. Is there anything like did you did you guys like the humor? Like, okay, I'm gonna talk about a few j jokes that I thought fell flat. Like, um, mm -hmm. for example, in the second movie, the second movie is where they introduced Mantis, right? Or was that the first mm -hmm. one? The second, second one. You remember, like, the running plot of, of uh, what's his name, Drax? You, you know, calling her ugly. Oh, you're so ugly. Then at the very last part of the film, he's like, you're beautiful on the inside. And it's like, I can't believe they're driving this joke into the ground, but it's funny. But in this film, when uh mantis is like oh but he's stupid but uh he has a good heart or whatever she says and then he's mm -hmm. like you think i'm stupid and then the way that the joke plays out it just like it goes nowhere and then she just wipes his mind and makes him forget but it doesn't end in a laugh it just ends in a weird like the scene ends but it doesn't end in a big punchline, like a big zapper and i feel like there's a lot of scenes like that where a joke was going somewhere and then they would just switch gears in this weird way and it just wouldn't be funny like, even yeah. when uh, Nathan Fillion came in, I thought that was kind of funny, but not that funny. Uh, when they landed on the planet, the scene they used in the trailer when they throw the ball at the girl, and, or, or Drax knocks the girl over. Like, again, I could see where they were going with it, but it didn't really, didn't really land for me. I felt like there was a lot of jokes like that that didn't land. One of my favorite Marvel jokes is in this movie. 
<laughs> okay, which is what? And it's uh, it's uh, when Star Lord tells Nebula to get in the fucking car. I don't think I've ever laughed yeah. harder than that. That's not even a joke. He just said fuck in a Marvel movie, and I thought it was so perfectly utilized. Like you, you can you get one f word, right? Right, right. What do you do? What do you use it for? Do you use it in like a giant battle? Do you use it like in a really emotional moment? No. Get in the fucking car. Yes, <laughs> I love that. Yes, I thought that was so well done. It, I liked some of the more like obvious humor was a little whatever, but I liked the little teeny tiny things that weren't meant to make you laugh out loud, but just like breathe air out of your nose a little bit more. I like those <laughs> yeah. a lot better. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that the sorry. Go no, ahead. Go ahead, put, go ahead, Julie. So, okay, if we're talking about things that I I don't know that I found, uh, I enjoyed them because they are entertaining. However, I didn't enjoy them as much as I enjoyed other jokes and entertaining things. However, I didn't hate them. Is uh, Cosmo? Yeah, not that Cosmo. funny. No, I, I like. It. Yeah. The actress and like, is the girl from Borat too, though I didn't know that. But, but anyway, yeah, it's Velma, yeah. you uncultured swine. Never That's saw that, actress. but that is by James Gunn, so now I'm gonna watch it. Also, it's Clint uh, Barton's wife. What? Uh, it's Hawkeye's wife is the voice of Cosmo. He's married to Maria Bakalova. No, 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 not re- the real, not in, the actress plays Laura Bar- Barton. <laughs> Oh, she Linda does? Cardellini. Yeah. No, that's two different people. Is it? Yeah, it's uh, it, the Hawkeye's wife is Linda Cardellini, and Maria Bakalova is Cosmo uh, the dog, which I guess is a Russian cosmonaut, and she's Russian, so it makes right. sense. Um, at least they got a Slot actor person. with the same same heritage. Um, however. I think that there wasn't, I don't think there was enough, there's always enough room for animals in a plot, but there isn't enough room for like Rocket and Groot and Cosmo and the trio. Also, can I, t- can, can we talk about the We Three vibes this video oh, is it, giving it, off? It's an adaptation of We Three, absolutely. Which yeah. I know Becca was a fan of. Remember Becca? I joke. No. Yeah, and uh, I don't know why, but this is you're way the only better one. than that. Okay, whatever you say. Because it was bad, dude. <sighs> mm. Also, Linda Cardellini voices Lila. That's why I'm mixing them up. Okay. Ah, uh, that's it. Lila. The the otter? The otter, yeah. His best friend? Yeah. So since you've kind of got the ball rolling, why don't we talk about some of the new characters in this movie? We mentioned the high evolutionary. I didn't realize this the guy was the same actor who was in Peacemaker as like the boss. Uh, Dude, I don't know what is All Chikuri of James Gunn. Yeah. Yeah, they're all the same. I thought he was perfect. I thought the thing I liked about him was he's not playing a megalomaniacal character. He's just playing a regular guy who's obsessed with his idea of, you know, starting a better world. And now now he's got to destroy that one. But he didn't come off as like a hammy over actor. So I really liked him. I do wish that he had more of the high evolutionaries costume, like with the weird headgear and like the little weird kind of skirt thing or whatever it's called. But I did think <laughs> he was really good. His robes or whatever. Right. Uh, Julie, what'd you think of high evolutionary? Uh <laughs> It's like almost the perfect, most scary person because it's a person who believes that what they're doing is creating for the right. the the for the good and the better of what evolution. Right. And uh, however, no, <laughs> he's just crazy, crazy about perfection. <laughs> mm-hmm. His name is Chuck Woody Iwuji. Iwuji. Yeah. Yep. Great actor. Becca, what do you think of him? Yeah, no. Fantastic villain. Oh my god. Um, I love the adaptation of him. Um, decided to not go human, which is fine. He doesn't spend a lot of time on Earth. He just mm-hmm. bases his entire world's concept, like his, his perfect concept of perfection on Earth. But 
just the little retcon of, oh, he just vi- visited Earth once and was like, yeah, this is what I'm going to, I'm going to make this but better. Um, works just as fine. Um, no, I thought it was really good. I His arc was just so sad and traumatic, mm. especially when he realized something he created outsmarted him. Like, yeah, right. had, he created something that had original thought. And when you you think he's going to reward Rocket, but he's like, no, I just that that's mine. And I just need the, the like he totally is like, well, you're not coming with us to the new world. You're you're a failure, even though mm. he's even though you figured like, it all out. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's heartbreaking. This dude is. Yeah, this dude sucks. But like, yeah, his character is very well done. Awesome. <laughs> but I yep. hated him. Right. I was like, I hate this guy. Rip his face off. And it and they did. <laughs> you love to hate him. Yeah. OK, so now we'll go to G.I. Jolie. G.I. Jolie and I's favorite actor, Will Poulter as Adam Warlock. Okay, oh, here's yeah, 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 yeah. I've been a huge fan of Will Poulter since. Uh, he was- Cousin Lion, Eustace? Witch, in the Wardrobe, or no? What yeah. are those movies called? Lion, Witch, no, what's the series called? Narnia? So the Chronicles, Chronicles of Narnia. Chronicles of Narnia 2, The, the Voyage, Voyage of the, the Dawn Treader. Of the Dawn Treader. I've been a fan of his since him in that. He was also in The the Revenant, which was great. He was also in, um, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, he was in um, Midsummer. Anyway, great actor. Been a fan of Warlock for 35 years. He wasn't the Warlock that I grew up on. He was I different. knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing like the comic book Warlock. There have been people that, have sa- that are saying, oh, he's more like the way Warlock first appeared in Fantastic Four number 66 or whatever. Okay, fine, maybe. I haven't read that particular issue. He was created by Kirby and Lee, but he was drastically changed by Roy Thomas. Then he was drastically changed by Jim Starlin again. And that's the version I like, the Jim Starlin Warlock. So nothing like that. But the good thing is is that now they can do something with them in the future. They can give them a solo movie and maybe they can follow the, the 70s comic arc. Although they can't because it's already been done with Infinity Gauntlet and Infinity War. But whatever, that's fine. But I was a huge fan. Huge fan. What do you think? Sorry, you cut out. Oh, G.I. Julie, what would you think of Will Poulter? <laughs> what do I think of him or what do I think of? Oh, what do you, what do you oh, think also, of? Also, let's not forget that he was in Bandersnatch. Oh, that's Black right. Mirror. Yeah. Right, I yeah. forgot about that. And also, one of my favorite series is Maze Runner. He was also in Maze Runner. Really? Okay. A super dickhead in that one. But I also, like, I, I love him. He's great. Yes. Um, cousin Eustace is one of my favorite jerk characters in the Narnia movies. Yes. As a cousin, he's the worst. But, um... He's such a great actor, and he's such a... He kind of slides under the radar, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't really know a lot about the uh, about Adam Warlock. Like my partner asked about Adam Warlock, and I was like, all I know is he, as far as I can tell, is created like the rest of the High Evolutionaries experiments. So him and Aisha. Yeah, I don't know. I know in the comics she's called her, but I don't know if this is yeah. She's also accurate. called Aisha sometimes. Okay. Of. Adam or Adam is called him, right? Right, Before right. He's called mm-hmm. Adam. Right. Yeah. But the high evolutionary had nothing to do with either of them in the comics, I believe. Yeah. Right. And it sounds like they're played as creations of the high evolutionary in the films. So they're mm-hmm. changing canon for the films, which I'm okay with. And sure. it suits the uh, it suits the the plot of this film. I, however, I feel like having him enter as a cutscene from which movie? Or not a cutscene, a an end credit scene? Yeah, the it first was Guardians. No, it was Guardians one or two. Yeah, yeah, he was alluded to. Yes. Okay, it seemed like almost a waste. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, I mean, first of all, again, for him to be that suppo- stupid. <laughs> Well, that's what I mean. Like he, he was he's supposed to be the main protagonist of the Infinity Gauntlet uh, story, the whole Thanos thing. And here he's played as kind of a joke. And 
again, as a big fan of the character, like I can understand now why people didn't like Thor Love and Thunder. Because, oh man, they played Thor like a joke. I'm not really a huge Thor guy, so I don't care. But I am a star- yeah. I am a uh, Adam Warlock guy, so I can understand why fans would be, you know, disappointed. So I can understand that. But again, they can always just fix it in the next film, right? Mm-hmm. And it's pretty. And it's a pretty easy fix because the whole idea of him is like he came out of his cocoon too early, right? So just. Mm-hmm. Doesn't Adam Warlock just go back in, like, to re- get resurrected and stuff all the time in the comic and, like, become more powerful or, like, whatever the plot needs for him to do? So, like, just shove him back in there and then he can finish cooking and then come back out <laughs> and be fully powered up and smarter. In this one, it, it really felt like he was a little fresh-eyed baby boy. And he's right. my baby boy. He's my baby, <laughs> Adam Warlock. Every time he's on screen, it was my favorite part of the movie. Um, <laughs> yeah. What a doofus. Like, this is Marvel's new himbo. I don't know what to tell you. This is him. He is gold and he is stupid. <laughs> and I love him. And I love him so much. I love how he learns empathy after he toasts a man alive. Right. Though, see, uh, that was fall down funny. That was good. Yeah. And the fact that they kept cutting back to it, I was like, this is awesome. This is what I want from James Gunn, right? And I think Will Poulter plays it so good because he plays it so straight. Right. And his little arc where he like just kind of, it's like, why did you save me? Like, I love the little, the, the whole like overarching themes of family and found family that this three movies are is amazing. But even like, he's like, well, I guess this, this is what I do now. He just totally abandons his mother. <laughs> right, right, right. Which, fair. No, Adam Warlock is my little, teeny tiny, fresh-eyed, little baby <laughs> powerhouse. And I love him. And nobody say anything bad about him. Thank you. All right. Um, now, here's the thing. We've already talked about Cosmo. Are there any other new characters that are significant enough to talk about. I don't even know if there I are. I want to talk about Cosmo even more. I love Cosmo. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's talk about Cosmo. Go ahead, She's Becca. a good dog. Okay, <laughs> I just can't. That, that joke, again, fell flat for me. It fell flat. No, I liked it because it's like, wow, this dog is hyper intelligent and has telekinetic ability, but still, good dog. And <laughs> I like the change of making it a girl. To better go- coincide with its origins of being the dogs that the Russians shot into space. That's fun. Mm-hmm. Were the dogs <laughs> that were shot into space girls? Uh, Laika was the, the dog that Cosmo uh. was based off of, and the Russians shot her into space. She mm-hmm. didn't make it back. Um, fun fact. <laughs> I also know that not only did she not make it back, no one gave a crap that she didn't make it back. Yeah. There was no, it's like they sent her to space and there was like no follow up. Like no, no one were... checked on her. She's still breathing. They just let her die. They're like, well, Sad. that didn't work. Anyway, next dog. Let's go. <laughs> no. But in Marvel comics, the dog. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> continues on into space, survives, gains abilities, and is a central part of the Guardians of the Galaxy, which I like. And awesome. I, I'm just so excited to see the dog on the team. In mm-hmm. the future, because I want to see the I want to I want Marvel to just keep ha- adding dogs into things. Like we've got Pizza Dog, right? Yes. We've got Cosmo. Um, there's definitely another dog. I don't. I can't. Why can't I think of it? But yeah, keep adding just random pets as main characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because I want my pet Avengers. Please, thank you. So let's talk about that. Is that what do we think is going to happen next with these characters? They, because they, they, I mean, spoiler alert. We we do know that Star Lord is going to return, which I'm happy about because I love Chris Pratt. But is there going to be another Guardians film featuring this new team? Do you think, or what do you think is going to happen next? Disney's going to just keep going, right? Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't they? This worked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They beat us over the head with Star Wars. They're going to do the same thing with the Marvel universe until we're. We've collapsed in a heap. Yeah, they're making Probably. four Captain Americas. They'll make four Guardians of the Galaxies. And That's I, true. This new team has Adam Warlock, Cosmo, and Phi Lavelle. Like, come on. That's dope. More I, Marvels, please. 
I definitely want to see, I would like to see this team, to be honest, as like background characters. I don't know if they could hold their own movie or carry their own movie, but I definitely want to see more Warlock. I'm here for him, 100%. Yeah. And are we all speculating or do we all kind of know that it's Secret Wars coming up? That's the next big baddie. We, it's, well, it is. Because it's Secret Invasion is going to be in that Nick Fury show, right? Yeah. yeah. Secret. Uh, or is that the, just blowing us off the track, you know? I don't know. Well, what are the two Avengers movies? There's... It's the Kang Dynasty, right? Right. And then so, what's the other one? Which might be off the table now. Yeah, that, uh, I don't know about that one anymore, guys. Yeah. Uh, no clue. Can't okay. remember. Brain... Quickly oh, Google. Okay. Quickly Google. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, why can't I find the link? I had it. Well, while you're doing that, I'm just going to say that uh, I am looking very forward to more Star-Lord. And I, I would I would give a new Guardians a chance with this Guardians. I, obviously, it'd be a different beast. But I am glad that they're wrapping up this team, that this team got its own ending, right? I would hate to see the trilogy fizzle out the way other, you know, series kind of do. So I'm happy about that. James Gunn got to do what he wanted. He wrapped up the series. And now we can move on. And save DC from the evil clutches of Zack Snyder. But anyway. Oh, it is Secret Wars. You're right, Jelly. Look it's... at that. I timed it up perfectly. <laughs> and, then, and then Secret Wars. So, okay. In 2026. And is it going to be an adaptation of the 80s Secret Wars or the 2000s Secret Wars? Well, let's hope it's the, 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 not the not Let's hope the 80s it's the 80s one. ones. Right. No! Okay, okay. So anyway, so, um, it's gonna if it's the '80s one, it has to be a beat for beat recreation. I don't care if it makes sense. I'm exactly. In, I'm into that. Uh, okay. So, is there anything else we'd like to say about this film? I mean, yes, I I agree. I liked it. I think I'd have to watch it again, again, going in with adjusted expectations. But I can say, if you watch this film and you haven't seen Peacemaker. Please watch Peacemaker. It is so funny. Becca, have you seen Peacemaker? No. <gasps> it's on the one streaming service I don't have, I think. <laughs> wow. What streaming service is it on? Uh, Crave? Crave? In Canada, yep, that's it's why. on Crave. Yeah, I was like, whatever HBO <sighs> is in Canada is the one that I don't have. <laughs> it's, it's well, worth by now getting... it's available just to... Somewhere. Yeah, you know, stream. I did watch The Last of Us somehow, so. There you go. Then you can always find a way. Mm, the Last of Us was important to me as a person. I don't know if Peacemaker is important to me as a person. If you saw the show, it would be. It's kind of like the Bible. You have to read it. You have to accept God in I don't. your heart in order to interpret the words properly. So, no. anyway. You you heard good analogy. Here. Good analogy. Peace okay. It's like the Bible. Yeah, it's like uh, Yahweh. Anyway, um, what would my Bible be? Batman versus Superman. Oh, <laughs> that's good Bible. Yeah, then you're yeah. I accept. Christ. I accept Ben Affleck into my heart. I accept uh, what's his name, Jesse Eisenberg, into my heart. Ugh. Oh, me as too. My Lord and Savior. Bad taste <laughs> all around. All right. Nah, we only have good takes here. Okay. Yeah, so, so are we going to miss all these characters? Do we think that their goodbyes were good enough? I think some, so. Some of them were kind of a little bit like, Mantis is like, I'm just going to go. Well, yeah. Um, it, 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 I don't want to say it felt forced, but it felt a little bit like tacked on. Like, oh, by the way, we've got 20 minutes left. Now we're going to also split the team up. Yeah. Right? A little bit of that. I mean, it is preferable to death because I really didn't want these characters to die. And the right. idea of like them potentially being able to come back if, if the actors wanted to or with new actors is possible. It mm -hmm. just was like very... Peter's like, well, I'm going to go to Earth. And Drax is like, well, I'm going to be a dad. Which I don't know where that meant he had to go anywhere. Um, and then Mantis is just going to go. So... It was just weird. Yeah. We didn't talk about Craglin at all. Who? Craglin? He's on Who's... the team. Yeah, which I actually he? wanted to bring that up. Oh, he's okay. He's fine. 
Well, he was like he was like a a team member who was just or somebody who was in in the the films because he's James Gunn's brother. Is he not? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. No, and it's, and he thing. ended up. He ended up being like a super fun character and having a lot to do in this film, including watch over the body right. of a comatose rocket, like, and and create a a, a comrade um, partnership with uh, the Cosmo. But like, I didn't really think anything of him, and then suddenly he f- like filled the Michael Rooker character. Right. Yeah, uh, it was like. I didn't really think that he had such a relationship with Yondu that like Peter did, but he gave him, he had the arrow. So I guess he, I don't know, Mm -hmm. got self-confidence at the end. Good for him. And do you know what? That's what I, 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 I I will admit, I think through all of this, through all of all three films now, I think the weakest, even though it's like central to the plot is the whole Ravagers thing. I'm not it yeah. really wasn't like yeah they were, it were, maybe and maybe they tried it and and it just didn't test well or I don't know but I'm I mean, I'm glad they didn't dwell on the ravagers cuz I don't really like any of them and they all kind of suck. Well and and the thing is is again getting back to the comic side of it I'm a huge fan of the old Guardians of the Galaxy team. This Guardians of the Galaxy was introduced in the 2000s. The movies are great, but I don't. I have no attachment to these characters from the comics, right? But so I don't care what they change. Mm-hmm. But I, I must point out that we didn't even mention Michael Rosenbaum. You guys know who Michael Rosenbaum is, right? Lex Luthor from yeah. Smallville. He's in this movie, oh, right? And he played Martin X, who's one of the original oh, Guardians he, of the Galaxy. He, you know what? Martin X was cool as hell. He was the the right. uh, the one guy. Right. <laughs> yeah. They made of crystal. Right. And he had was he the the guy with the magic powers? I don't even know if he did anything to be honest, did he? No. Then I'm thinking of the big red lizard guy that had magic. That one guy was cool as hell. Mm. Um, I didn't even realize he was there. He it was I don't know that was he that big a deal? The film? Not really, yeah, no. Really All of these people okay. are like the original Guardians. So like Sylvester Stallone was playing whatever his name is, right? Right. Starhawk. Yeah. <laughs> was he? Yeah. He uh, plays- you know, but what was he called? He wasn't called that in the film, was he? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> the car O'Gord. Okay. Well, all I can say is that I hope they introduce more of the original characters later. Um, Yondu was there, right? He was the original yeah, one. Yeah, I know, but again, Michael Rooker is not the Yondu from the comics, you know, at all. He just looks like him. But whatever. Uh, he didn't have the cool, like, pointy shoulders and, like, the little, like, loincloth, though. So. Uh, anyway. I mean, so, okay. Not comic book accurate to me. Let me just say one thing. I mean, it's almost like the shock of the Guardians franchise has been diluted a little bit because when it came out, it was such a, it was so different from everything else. And one of the things that uh, James Gunn did right was the, he made the superheroes look like superheroes, right? Like comic book characters. Their costumes were bright. The lighting was bright. And in this film, they did it again with that weird organic planet. I love that. Like, take away the comedy take away the Marvel stuff, and you just have a really cool science fiction idea of flying down to this planet, if you'd call it that, where everything's organic, everything has that tactile feeling to it. And I just love that they did it because, like you you mentioned uh, Ant-Man earlier, the third one, Ant-Man was sabotaged by so much CGI. And this film, I thought, I mean, I don't know exactly what was CGI and what wasn't, but at least it looked real. As long as I'm tricked, it doesn't matter if it's real or not. And I thought it looked real and uh, like you could touch it. Do you guys like that? Considering it was in space and mostly aliens, I'm going to assume it was a lot of CG. Um, but I'm saying, was it models? Was it like uh, puppets? Or not puppets, but you know what I mean? Like when they're putting their hands in things, it was physically there. It wasn't CGI. That's what I'm saying. You no, know, it definitely looked a lot Actually, better. no, they did fly to outer space and film this movie. I just Googled it. Oh, wow. They were in zero gravity for um, the entire film. Shout out to 
the jokes, same quality in the movie as they right. are now here. Uh -huh. um, what was your point? The special effects were really good. <laughs> That's my yeah, The movie did look good. It didn't yes, look I like the crappy. It didn't look like the crappy CGI in Ant-Man. Which, by the way, I noticed you blamed James Gunn for Ant-Man. No. Oh, I thought you did. <laughs> okay. I think I was I was comparing the two because that was the last MC movie compared to this one. And it was like... Yeah, which there's another theory that the guy they just fired from... Oh. Yeah, they, I also ruined it. The, the guy that they... not They didn't fire him. They dissolved Marvel Comics just to get rid of him. And now Marvel Comics doesn't exist. Uh, what's his name? Ir Irv, is it um, Perlmutter? Oh, Ike Perlmutter. Ike Perlmutter, yeah. They basically dissolved Marvel Comics. It doesn't exist. No one cares. Uh, and so now he's no longer involved with Marvel. And so there's this theory that he was the one that was kind of making Phase 5 not as good as the other phases of Marvel. I don't know if that's true or not, but maybe the films will get a little bit better after the failure of movies like Eternals, which I heard some people liked, but I didn't. Me! That, that, right. that was me. I liked it. Right. Anyway... So yeah, hey, I still like that movie. Great. Someone has to. Yeah, so, me. <laughs> so anyway, I guess that wraps up our review. Is there anything else, G.I. Julie, you'd like to say about this film? Nope. Go see it. I'm going to go see it again. I'm going to say go see Peacemaker. Go, go stream Peacemaker and go see The Suicide Squad and go see Superman Legacy and then go see this film as well. Becca? Is Superman Legacy, a movie that hasn't doesn't even have a date yet. Right, that hasn't even been written yet. Well, it has. It's yeah. a, this is a draft, but yeah, someone's got it in their in their noggin. It's out there. Right, go see that. Um, yeah, no, obviously, go like everyone saw this movie. As soon as people were like, "No, this one's actually good," people were, went to go see it. So, I'm glad just, it's doing well. If you per, like, if you like animals, just be care. Like, it's a lot. It's it's a lot. A lot. Yep. And like, there's babies. Oh my god. Yeah. I like. Don't know how some people are like some people who are really sensitive are gonna sit through this because it was kind of brutal. Um. Mm -hmm. Like, how dare they kill Floor? Floor is my favorite Marvel character. <laughs> Good name too. Great name. Ten out of ten name for mm -hmm. all of them. Right. Yep. We got Lila. Beautiful. Rocket makes sense. Teefs. He has them. The floor. <laughs> now, see, that was a good joke, too. Well, yes. Well, obviously, some of the jokes worked, but just some of them <laughs> didn't, you know? I don't know. What are you going to do? Anyway. I'm going my time. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and again, like I said, I am glad it's doing well, because wouldn't it suck if it bombed and then DC was like, oh, shit, what did we... We just signed this guy for, like, ten movies. We better... Uh, backtrack on that which has happened quite a bit in the last 10 years we have seen so many directors get like these multi-million dollar uh offers and then you know for example the guys who created game of thrones they were about to sign like a 75 million dollar contract for star wars oh then game of thrones the whole last season sucked so they pulled the plug on that patty jenkins was given a star wars film they pulled the plug on that uh the guy who directed fantastic four was going to direct Star Wars Episode Nine, they fired him, and they got J.J. Abrams, right? So this has happened a lot in the last few years. So I'm glad that this is doing well. To be fair, I feel like even if this this movie would still do better than DC's other movies, so you can only go up from here. That's true. All right. And I say that as a lover of the DC Universe movies. I recognize them for what they are. Not... Mm. Which is? You know. <laughs> okay we'll leave it at that there's our secret ending okay thank you for joining us there you go guardians of the galaxy volume three everybody see it this is james gunn's swan song for marvel so everyone go and enjoy it and cry and laugh and do all the other things too good movie thank you james gunn for giving us probably the best in my opinion film series from marvel studios there you go